Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Um, do please be seated. A big welcome to St. Michael's. You can tell that we're in uh, a slight degree of chaos this morning, but don't worry. And uh, we, we found the teddy, so we thought we ought to bring him out. So lovely to welcome you all. A particular welcome to Ivor on his special baptism day. He's over there and uh, I think he's inspecting the teddy. Is that right? <laughs> we hope that Ivor and his family and friends and relatives have a wonderful day and uh, it's good to welcome you today. Just one or two uh, announcements. Don't forget the food bank. It's important that we continue our support of that. Obviously there's the, um, there's the container at the back of the church, but there's also other ways of contributing. There is a, a new Bishop of Dorking been announced, so do look at Pew's News for the details but he has been the Archdeacon of Surrey, so not necessarily the Archdeacon of this patch, because we're in Dorking, but um, we will get to know him, I'm sure, in due course. Now, if you'll excuse me, Baptism Group, I just have a, a kind of, want to have a brief discussion with the congregation. Is that all right, congregation? No? <laughs> what can I do? Harvest Supper is not going to be possible this year because we haven't had anybody able to commit to organising it. I think it's the date. I don't think it's necessarily people just deciding that they don't want to do it. But a couple of questions for you. Two weeks later, there is a bowling evening in the village hall, you know, the old Skittle Alley, um, which was great fun last time. So shall we just enjoy that? Do you yeah. think? Yeah. Yes. OK. And another option is if we make the after service um, on uh, the Sunday, which will start at 11, um, do we then sort of have cakes and nibbles and a bit more of a social time? Yeah. Yes. Would that work, yeah. do you think? Yes. Yeah. Would you be happy with that? Yes. Yeah. So that we can still connect with each other and just be prepared to hang around slightly longer after that service? Yes. Are we happy yeah. with those options? Yes. Excellent. And then just another thought, let me know what you think we should do next year so that I, we can book the hall, all right? Uh, if we want it, we could have lunch on the Sunday or the Saturday evening, we could do the supper. So just let me know what you think about that, but no rush for that. We just need to make sure the hall's booked. Thank you very much. Now I do need to publish some bands of marriage. I publish the bands of marriage between Kelvin David Pritchard of St. Martin's Dorking and Sarah Jane Blake of St. Martin's Dorking, although we claim them as well. <laughs> I also publish the bands of James Robert Brooks and Emily Jane Garbett, both single and of the parish of St. Mark's Tatman Corner. These are for the second time of asking. I'm also required to publish the bands of marriage between Aidan Bernard Robson and Laura Elizabeth Eccles of St Paul's Nork, and this is for the first time of asking. Both the latter couples will be marrying here by qualifying connection. If any of you know of any reason in law why these couples may not marry each other, you are taught to declare it now. It's where I really do hope for silence in the church. <laughs> So now let's just say a prayer for these couples. Heavenly Father, we continue to thank and praise you for the gift of love, and particularly for the gift of love as expressed in marriage. And we do pray for Calvin and Sarah, for James and Emily, and for Aidan and Laura as they prepare for their wedding days, that you would be with them. May all the preparations go smoothly, but above all, may you give them a sense of your presence with them throughout their lives, that they may be faithful to each other and find real joy in their relationships. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. So now we're going to start our time of worship. You should have a sheet and do respond with the words in bold. Let us worship God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A prayer. <laughs> Loving God, we've come here to worship you. Help us to pray to you in faith, sing your praises with gratitude, 
and listen to your word with eagerness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. So now we're going to praise God in uh, a well-known hymn. So please stand and let's praise God with Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. A time to say sorry to God. God, our Father, we come to you in sorrow for our sin. For turning away from you and ignoring your will for our lives. Save us. Father, forgive us, save, save us, us and help, help us. us for behaving just as we wish, without thinking of you. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For, fa for failing you by what we do and think and say. Father, forgive us. Save, Save us and help, help us. For letting ourselves be drawn away from you by temptations in the world about us. Father, forgive us. Save us and help us. For living as if we were ashamed to belong to your Son. Father, forgive us. Save, Save us and help us. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So now we come to the baptism. So if the parents and godparents and Ivor and uh, anybody else would like to come to the font, please do a baptism party, make sure you can see and uh, we will. Right, Ivor. 
So I think Ivor looks very handsome today, don't you? Yeah, all dressed up, and he's looking at me as if I'm slightly oddly dressed. I can't work out why. But a big welcome to you, Ivor, and to um, Hannah. I know that you're very familiar with this church, and to Struan, where I think you were both married, weren't you? So it's lovely to have you back. And I know you have family with you today as well. Are we going to answer back? <laughs> Jesus said, let the little children come to me. Do not stop them. We thank God for Ivor, who has come to be baptised today. Christ loves him and welcomes him into his church. So, I ask all of you in the congregation who seem to be over there at the moment, will you support Ivor as he begins his journey of faith? We will. Will you help Ivor to live and grow within God's family? We will. God knows each of us by name and we are his. So parents and godparents, wrong way around, but parents and godparents, you speak for Ivor today. So will you pray for him and help him to follow Christ? We all wander from God and lose our way. Christ comes to find us and welcomes us home. In baptism, we respond to his call. Therefore, I ask you, the parents and godparents of Ivor, do you turn away from sin? Do you reject evil? Do you turn to Christ as Saviour? Do you trust in him as Lord? So now we come to the signing of the cross. I'm just going to put a little bit of oil on your forehead, or okay? That's all right. Special oil, blessed by the bishop. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Either Christ claims you as his own. Receive the sign of his cross. Do not be ashamed to confess the faith of Christ crucified. You are his forever. Stand bravely with him against all the powers of evil and remain faithful to Christ to the end of your life. And Ivor, may Almighty God deliver you from the powers of darkness and lead you in the light and obedience of Christ. Amen. Now a prayer over the water. Praise God who made heaven and earth, who keeps his promise forever. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. We praise you, loving Father, for the gift of your Son, Jesus. He was baptised in the River Jordan, where your Spirit came upon him and revealed him as the Son you love. He sent his followers to baptise all who turned to him. Now, Father, we ask you to bless this water, that those who are baptised in it may be cleansed in the water of life and filled with your Spirit, that they may know that they are loved as your children, safe in Christ forever. Amen. Amen. Now this is a profession of faith for everybody, congregation, parents, baptism, family, all together. Let us affirm together with these who are being baptised our common faith. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, come on then. All right. Hello. Your mummy and daddy are just standing there, okay? Just going to put a little bit of water on your head. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Okay. 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 Ivor Mitchell, I baptise you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right. Is that okay? Yes. <laughs>
<laughs> okay. May God has received you by baptism into his church, pour upon you the riches of his grace, that within the company of God's pilgrim people, you may daily be renewed by his anointing spirit and come to his inheritance of the saints in glory. Amen. Amen. Back to money. <laughs> now we've all got a prayer that we can say for Ivor, so let's pray together for Ivor. Bless your eyes that you may see God. Bless your mouth that you may speak his truth. Bless your ears that you may hear his call. Bless your heart that you may be filled with love. Bless your feet that you may walk your own true path to him. Amen. And a prayer for the parents and godparents. Faithful and loving God, bless those who care for Ivor and grant them your gifts of love, wisdom and faith. Pour upon them your healing and reconciling love and protect their homes from all evil. Fill them with the light of your presence and establish them in the joy of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well done. You okay? <laughs> Good. Now we're going to go to the front, all right? And everybody will be able to see you and we'll welcome you into the church. Is that all right? So parents, godparents, and uh, Ivor, if you'd like to follow me. Everybody else, if you'd like to resume your seats, thank you. Make sure everybody can see Ivor, because we're going to welcome him. So let's do this with enthusiasm. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. By the one spirit, we're all baptized into one community. We, we welcome you into, into the fellowship of faith. faith. We, we are children of the same heavenly father. father. We, we welcome you. Now there's one or two things to give you. We hope that your mum and dad and godparents will read the Bible with you so you may learn all the Bible stories. It's a special Bible. That is his certificate of baptism. And then we have Francesca. And we have Christopher. And we have Grace. You have big responsibilities, so may the Lord bless you as you seek to uh, support Ivor in the days and years to come. Now we have the baptism candle. <laughs> okay. I won't give this to Ivor. Um, oh. Would you like to hold it for him? Just so he can see it. Ivo, you've received the light of Christ. Walk in his light all the days of your life. Shine as a light in the world to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Well done, Ivo. Another clap for Ivo. Yay. Now, I strongly suggest you blow the candle out, and that, that is the case for it. But. Lovely. Welcome. Welcome to the church. Right? <laughs> if you'd like to take your seats. So, lovely. So now we're going to recognise that everybody, including the tiniest little baby, including you, Iva, is held by God in his hands. So please stand. He's got the whole world in his hands. <laughs>
please be seated and we'll have our first Bible reading. Thank you, Andy. The reading this morning is from Romans chapter 8, verses 32 to 39. If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who is he that condemns? Christ Jesus who died, more than that who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation, will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from the Gospel of St. Matthew, reading verses, reading chapter 13, verses 31 to 33 and 44 to 46. Parables of the mustard seed and yeast. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and planted in his field. Though it is the smallest of all seeds, yet when it grows, it's the largest of garden plants and becomes a tree so that the birds come and perch in its branches. He told them still another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed into about 60 pounds of flour until it worked all through the dough. Jesus spoke all these things to the crowd in parables. He didn't say anything to them without using a parable. So was fulfilled what was spoken through the prophets. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things hidden since the creation of the world. The parables of the hidden treasure and the pearl. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again, and then in his joy went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the words of Scripture and we pray for the help and inspiration of your Holy Spirit as we think together about the words we have heard read. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, it's been lovely to welcome Iva into the church today and we know that children are very much loved by God and that our church community also love children too. One vicar was talking to some children of junior school age about what they thought about things like heaven and earth and, sermon, and sermons, and they were able to ask questions. So one of them said, yeah, I would like to go to heaven one day because I know my brother won't be there. <laughs> Another one said, I was wondering if there are any devils on earth because, you know, I think I've got one in my class. And finally, Vicar, I liked your sermon on Sunday, especially when it was finished. 
So today we've had some great readings, actually. They're all lovely. Four parables and that passage from Romans. They all point towards God's love for us and help us see how God works in our world and in our lives. The parables are about the kingdom of heaven. And it may surprise you that Jesus didn't talk a lot about heaven, but he did teach a lot about the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom, kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven, they're the same, that Jesus taught about was the rule of God on earth a perfect union of earth and heaven, but different to the heaven that we might imagine. Jesus came to bring the kingdom to earth. And so he was declaring himself to be the Messiah, the king sent by God. Don't get me wrong, Jesus did promise eternal life, but eternal life in his kingdom. It's a now and not yet concept. Either and all who've been baptised or christened, all who trust in Jesus can belong to this wonderful kingdom forever. So the first two parables tell us of something really tiny and hidden, and we need patience to see to come to fruition. Now, baking and gardening are very popular, and I know quite a few of you do enjoy one or both. I'm not an expert at either, I have planted some seeds and had to wait patiently for them to grow, but actually 50% of the time it hasn't been successful. I have made bread in the past too, and I know you need to leave it to rise for a while before it can be baked. And the yeast needs time to work. Jesus mentions then a tiny, tiny mustard seed growing into a plant 10 foot tall. Yeast is small, in fact, it's a single cell microorganism which uses sugar for energy and produces carbon and alcohol as a result. Alcohol is important in brewing and winemaking. You might even sample some at the celebration afterwards. And the carbon dioxide is what causes the bread mix to double or treble in size. Isn't yeast an amazing gift of God, by the way? But Jesus is telling us that God's kingdom is active and growing, hidden like seed in the soil or yeast in dough. And then one day this kingdom will become obvious. Perhaps we could think of the seed or yeast as Jesus or his Holy Spirit, perhaps better, and the soil or the dough as the world. For Jesus came to bring the kingdom into the world, but it hasn't been fully revealed as yet. There is activity, and it's real, but it's not come in all its fullness. And this kingdom is one of justice, love, mercy, and peace. Now this in part explains why there's so much wrong in the world. God is the rightful ruler, but many don't recognize or accept his reign. There are no easy answers to suffering, but the parables offer us reassurance. God is present and at work in all things. His purposes cannot be thwarted. And we are precious to God. We're loved and we're forgiven. And nothing can take that away from us. We could think of the mustard seed or the yeast being planted in our hearts, the kingdom there, and slowly growing, but surely, so that there is peace, love and mercy present within us and growing. I know it wasn't in our reading today, but a couple of verses earlier in verse 28 of the Romans chapter 8, it says, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who've been called according to his purpose. Now, this is a bit of a problem verse sometimes, because I think we don't consider it in its fullness. But yes, God does work for good in the lives who love him. And he has worked for my good in some pretty awful situations. But that hasn't meant I haven't had struggles and frustrations, and sometimes things have turned out badly. But I can, in looking back, see that God was at work, fulfilling his purposes, although I couldn't see it at the time. Now, I don't want to bore you with Greek grammar or translation issues, but actually a better way to express this verse is, we know that in all things, 
God works together with those who love him to bring about what is good. We who love God are called to work with him to bring about what is good and in accordance with his will. Isn't that amazing? We're invited to be part of the purposes of God, to grow his kingdom. He cannot be seen, but we can be. We are the bread rising or the seed growing as we allow God to work in and through us. We can be his hands and his feet when suffering comes. We can work for what is for ourselves, for those we encounter, and for the world, good. So God may not always stop suffering, but he provides comfort in the form sometimes of Christians. They can be the healers, the providers, the carriers of the gospel of peace. Part of the purposes of God that we're called to be working for is salvation. In its, fully sense, in its fullest sense, it means wholeness and eternal life, as well as forgiveness. We need to share God's love so that the kingdom can grow and more people recognise Jesus as king. Now, the other two parables give a slightly different perspective on the kingdom, once more hidden, but there are people searching for it because they've heard about it. They recognise its value, perhaps. Many people dream of treasure, dream of being rich, being rich, sorry. But in these parables, the finders of the most wonderful pearl and precious treasure want it for its own sake. They don't plan to sell it on. In fact, they were already rich and they've given up those riches to get it. They invested in what they believed to be more precious than anything else. And Paul reminds us why the kingdom is so precious. God has given us Jesus, Paul writes in Romans, and through him we are given all we could ever really want. We are not condemned before God, but welcomed. We can know his love now, be confident of it forever, know that nothing can separate us from it. God's love, so powerful it took Jesus to the cross, has defeated death and sin. It's there for us. When we're going through tough times, and Paul lists trouble or hardship or persecution or famine, we who are united with Jesus can trust that powerful love and know that it can't be overcome or defeated by anything. And then we have that lovely idea of being adopted into God's family. He is our father. We are his sons and daughters, loved and sure of his love for us. That is the pearl of great price, the treasure worth everything we own. And our hope and prayer today is that throughout his life, Ivor will know this love of God. He can never be separated from it. It's the most precious of all gifts. It's a gift available to each of us. But the parables challenge us to act as well as to be confident of this love. So a challenging question, I think, for us to think about. Will you give up anything that prevents you from enjoying the pearl or the treasure beyond price? Will you give up false hopes and dreams, sacrifice whatever it takes to commit to following Jesus and working for his hidden but growing kingdom, a kingdom that will last forever? Amen. So now we're going to sing and we're going to remind ourselves that our true hope is in Christ. In Christ alone my hope is found. Please stand.
be seated and Jenny will lead us in a time of prayer. Thank you. The response within the prayer is, O oh God, hear our prayer. Almighty God, in the noise and confusion of life, we pray for peace in our hearts. In these few moments of stillness, we bring before you our prayers, asking for help and guidance as we journey through our earthly life and giving thanks and praise for our many blessings. We pray for our own church and for the progress of Christ's mission here at St. Michael's. Please care for our parish and for this congregation and for the people who make every day special. We pray that our beautiful church premises may convey a message of openness, be a means of Christian service and forge effective links with community groups that we may be reaching out to those on the fringes of faith or outside it and be proactive in meeting social and community needs such as our food bank collections. Oh God, hear our prayer. Today we welcome the Mitchell and Brewer family and friends, and of course, most importantly, baby Ivor, to St. Michael's in celebration of his baptism. We pray for all our young people in the parish, for those that attend Box Hill School, St. Michael's infants, and the nursery. We pray for all our voluntary helpers who give so freely of their time, and for the wider church family, including our church wardens, our choir, Kelvin and Edward, our IT buffs, the Bible study groups, church cleaners, flower rangers, wedding, funeral and baptism coordinators, to name but a few. Oh God, hear yeah. our prayer. We pray for our elderly members and for those who through frailty or ill health may not be able to be with us each Sunday. We pray for Judy Gilbert residing at Westcott House and her family Richard, Carrie and Joanna throughout these difficult times. We pray for those local families that have recently experienced the loss of a loved one. Oh God, hear yeah. our prayer. Everlasting God, we pray for the life of the world. Especially at this time, we pray for the millions of people hit by natural disasters brought on by climate change. Creator God, you reveal yourself to us through the wonders of the natural world. Help us realize how important it is to preserve this natural world so that future generations can continue to be in awe of all its wonders. Help us then to work with others, to influence our leaders, to make the right, and courageous decisions about our world. O oh God, hear yeah. our prayer. We give thanks for this wonderful earth, which we share with the whole community of life. Help us to live in such a way that we respect all life, accepting that we must reduce our demands in order to allow other forms of life to continue and flourish. In our cycle of prayer, we are asked to pray for Bangladesh. Bangladesh is prone to flooding due to the number of riv rivers crisscrossing the country. And now, faced with the inevitability of future climate change, the flooding will only become more extreme. Almost 80% of Bangladesh is a floodplain, with most of the country only a metre or less above sea level. May we remember that the tallest oak grew from a small acorn and that every small change each of us makes has its own effect and that together all our efforts can produce the change we seek. O oh God, hear our prayer. And finally, back to baby Ivor. Children are great imitators, so give them something to imitate.
Thank you, Jenny. And now we'll have the prayer for the day, the collect. So please remain in an attitude of prayer. Lord God, your son left the riches of heaven and became poor for our sake. When we prosper, save us from pride. When we are needy, save us from despair, that we may trust in you alone, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join me as we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father Amen. in heaven, hallowed Amen. be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So now we come to our last hymn and the collection will be received as we sing. So please stand when I survey the wondrous cross. Please stand. closing prayer and blessing. The love of the Lord Jesus draw you to himself. The power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in his service. The joy of the Lord Jesus fill your hearts. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon each of you and those you love, today and always. Amen. Amen. It's been great to be together today. I hope you will stay for teas, coffees, refreshments, and to Hannah and Struan and Iva and your guests, have a fantastic day. And I hope we will see you again at some point. It'd be lovely to see how Iva grows and, uh, and uh, matures with all your loving care and attention, of course. So have a great day. And the rest of you have a fantastic day too. So now just go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.